Hey, welcome back to Getting in the Game. I'm Dennis Eilstra, and today we're back on the right wing, but the primary part of the video is the strut doubler and angle. I'll show you how I ended up doing it. Um, the first couple times uh, I made a mistake on one, the other one didn't quite fit from the old wing when we were putting in the strut, I'll explain that. And uh, I'll show you my techniques of getting the next one done right. Okay, the first thing I'm going to document is that this piece came with the new spar, and I believe they're match drilled, but this one's cut on a much more angle, so there's more meat on the old one. This is the old one, and I did bolt this up, and when just before it got tight, wanted to see how, it, how the play was in the holes and stuff, and this one that came with my old one is actually fits better. It was really nice and tight up against this angle, and that gave it better um, support. And the bolts seemed to line up a little bit better. When I snugged them all up with my fingers, shoved them down, seeing how much play there was, this one moved quite a bit. So I definitely changed that out. Uh, this angle here, if you can see, starts off a little bit narrower in the back and it goes the angle goes way up further so there's more meat on this one from there to there it's a bigger piece so that was a no-brainer i'm just going to do that and we've been denibbing i've got the skins primed over there i got the bottom where the gas tank fits all primed and ready to go so i'm going to continue denibbing these holes in the back of the rail little little touch and go hard to get back in there but we have to finish that up, so and then we can start riveting. Oh, the other thing I did is uh, I ended up cutting this back off and getting the edges all sand up. So when I get it riveted up, I'll make that uh, what I call the dog bone. And I have seen a lot of access panels built here, but then that leaves the bottom half on. And I want to rivet this completely to the airplane before um, I. I uh, drill the holes and stuff for setting the uh, angle of attack, or the incidence, I mean. And I don't want this in the way at all. And that came comes out good. It's a way for me to test with a few rivets, even if I had to do it every year. It's a few rivets, comes right off, and to access where the gas lines hook up. The other thing that's good about it is if these rivets that I've got to drill out fall inside, there's access hole to set a vacuum up in there, suck them out, and I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm not worried about losing those inside the wing. When I'm sanding the holes, it serves two purposes. It, it gets it ready. For those who doesn't, don't know, you got to prep it for a primer so it's ready to receive the primer. It'll bite better. And instead of denibbing these with a tool, it makes the metal nice and square. It doesn't take anything out. It just takes the top of the nib off, which I like that better for how the rivets will fit. A quick thing, the uh, holes when you're denibbing them, you can always tell which way. When the, the drill or whatever the tool is called comes down through, it boils out the bottom and it leaves a little bit more nib on one side of the sheet metal than the other. And I always like doing this side the second because uh, all the work's done. And over here, it's, it's much easier. It's awfully nice out here today. And I don't want to wait for this to dry. I want to, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to be able to keep working. I decided to try to put this out here. Well, I got the back all completely sanded and rechecked quite a few of these, went over all of them actually, and taped it up and got it good and primed. And now I'm just waiting for it to dry. And that was, that's difficult, but Checked them all with a mirror. They look really good. And 
ready to rock and roll. I can take that sheet that we just did outside and put her on now, as soon as this is dry. So it's so nice to be out here today. Uh, it's been a heat wave here and it's nice to be having that dry. And it was 56 this morning when I come out here. And uh, I was looking at Jupiter and hanging out with my telescope. First thing before coffee, it was nice. Um, but while this is drying, I was wondering if any of you knew of a uh, some kind of book or a video or something that tells how what a guy needs for VFR. Um, that's all my plane's going to have. I'm not going to ever get a license, probably more than uh, a sportsman's license. And I just don't have any background in that. Um, I barely can make my handheld radio work. So um, that green. And when I say steam gauges, I just know the word from online. I don't even know where they come up with the word for steam gauges. So if you, anybody knows of a a good place to look or system to read about so I'll make whoa that was scary did you see that I think I better get that inside well I'm happy to report that I have nothing to report that's all it did um, it just it was so calm when I went out there so I wasn't worried about it at all but of course I've been working in here for so long and it started to get a little nasty not nasty a little gusty you see the my uh my grandpa's windmill wasn't even going around. Hey, I got something to share. Uh, just tried a new thing. Of course, I've only had one wing that I've uh, had experience on, but a lot of I see guys online when a, when a rivet won't go in, they just drill it real quick and then put it in. Well, so try dropping your rivets in first and then come back and click over all up and it just pulls the rivet. It pulls a little tension on it. You can't get it out now, but it's where it's down all the way. It's where it's supposed to be. It'll rip it up really nice, and it worked great. Hope it helps. Boy, I took my own advice, and this works a lot better. I know my riveting pattern, and they slip right in. If I was to click all this all up and leave those gaps, they'd, be, they'd fight me a lot more. I can do it with my hand now. I used to always have to use this tool to wiggle them in, you know. Sometimes I still do, but let's see. Let's see if it'll make a liar out of me. No? That one's in. Look at that. One-handed. Like a pro. Well, we know better than that, don't we? Awesome. Give it a try. Matter of fact, I'd put this in to help line it up because it's such an important piece. I put that in first and worked out from it that I had to unclick out to get these in because it just holds everything so nice and tight when you're when you got your clicos in. And uh, you know those those uh, A5s like to catch on the edge of the piece in the back. Well, I got another tip. Um, I had to be showed this, so I never thought of it on my own. But if you're looking at something close and you can't get your head up quite high enough to look through your bifocals, turn your glasses upside down. You wouldn't believe it. Puts them way up at the top. Now I can look really close right up in here. I can see it just perfect. Well, I've been working all afternoon on and off. Got these supports all cleaned up, primed, and in place. And now the next thing is to start riveting. Now that we got her all riveted up, feels really good to have that done. And uh, got the rear channel taken, or rear skin taken back off. And uh, left this one on because I had to finish this bracket in behind. And now that I got it all riveted up, we can get into the strut support. Okay, you can do this any way you want, but I've done a few of them now. And they're very tricky to get exactly the way you want them. So I'm just going to give you my, I thought I was going to do it. In, I'm going to try to do it in 10 steps. So step one, well, first I'll just give you a quick backstory in case you're watching this for the first time. So you'll understand some of this. I, I built this wing originally. And when I was uh, drilling out the center spar, we made a mistake. So we replaced the center spar and these skins. So now it's, it's done. We've got the skins on. But um, one of the processes of doing the bottom of the wing is building 
the strut support. And uh, the first one that I had was this one. And it, when I riveted it in, it was already built and made for the, this wing the first time. And now that we've done it again with a whole new spar, uh, it, does, it didn't line up just perfect. When I clicked it in and the hole was off just a hair and this bottom wouldn't come completely up to it flush. So this one was basically scrapped, but I'll use that for some demonstrations. So the next one um, I ordered, and when I was doing it all, uh, I had a problem drilling out this center hole, and it was unacceptable. So basically, you got to start over from scratch. So this time, the third time, um, I bought two of these kits. So in case I made a mistake, I could just keep going. So I bought two uh, of the doublers and two angles. And this is the one that I got done with. It just so happens that this worked really well. So this is what bolts on here. I take it we don't want any slop in this. Step one, this piece here might not fit under this angle, so you'll have to make a slight notch in it. And that will look like, like this, right here. That's step one. Get that to fit so that when you click it in there, it clears this by whatever amount you want. Step two, mark from the very front edge of your doubler, 55 millimeters, as you can see, and that will, this, they give you a lot of extra here. So when we get done, we're going to have to trim this. So that will be how you line it up underneath this part. Check this out a second. Okay, step three. You put this up against your angle. Once it's all clicoed, once it's cleared, once it's clicoed to the airplane wing, put this under, line it up with that hole where you want it. You will clamp this to it and get your height right. It really matters how flush that is. Use, use brackets or use whatever you have. Don't scratch any of this. These worked really well. I was able to reach in and clamp it from this side and from this side. So that's how I held it in place. When you're happy with the fit, then clamp the ends down here to it. And you will be drilling through here with a 332nd to get this lined up with your angle bracket and that's where that's going to live so make sure the height of it's right and your back and forth is right it has to be flush with this piece here once those are drilled i would uh, take your 332nd clicos and click them up so when you uh when you're really happy with your fit go ahead and upsize Unclico all this, upsize, and rivet it from this side because this is the thinner metal of the two metals. And the head should be on the thinner side according to um, construction standards. Okay, that brings us to step nine. The next part I did is make sure that after that's riveted up, now that's squeezed in even tighter than what it was with just Clicos through this way. So once it's riveted, you're going to be taking this on and off several times, but that's okay. We want it right. So re clico this all on, reclamp this to it. Make sure that baby is up there back and tight just as far as you can. Just make sure it's right on that because when you go to rivet this on the plane, it will want to go down slightly. Mark. Figure out your center of this right there. You'll be able to put the bolt in down to the doubler. It'll go in just a little. And make sure that the head of that, find the center, and make sure the head of that doesn't touch this once it's in. I see I've got, oh, maybe an eighth inch clearance there. Drill that hole out to the doubler and Upsize that to 5 seconds, 
And now you have what's going to eventually hold that right in place so that when this is clamped on, it won't go up and down at all. It'll, it'll be very secure. So the, the fun part of uh, 10, and I laid it in there, and I just set it off to one side and wiggled it a little. Then I went up and wiggled it a little, and I went right and wiggled it a little and back. And I just kept doing that back and forth without damaging this and made a nice mark in the center. And that did a really nice job of finding center. Un Uncleco this, uncleco it all, go drill it. Once you, you'll have that little mark right there. Go ahead and drill that out with like an eighth inch on your drill press. Put this back on and or take a marker after you found your center. And it's important to go around and around and around in there and get a nice mark where you're very happy with how clean it is to the edge. Because I found that when you're drilling, even while you're upsizing, they like to move even in a drill press. So have that outer edge while you're doing it, go very slowly. And the outer edge of that hole that's marked with the marker, if you get it right all the way around, you'll be able to see if it's starting to slide off center, even in a drill press. No clearance issues whatsoever. It just fits in snug, just perfectly. Clean up your edges and you should have it. Test fit it, put it on, test fit the bolt, put her down through there. And when you're then mark, mark the front of this because when this fits in, that little bit of an angle, it'll hit up in here, that extra they had on there. As you can see, they got quite a bit of extra. See how that is? Of course, the, that's the thickness of the metal that's out further. So I just took that edge off so that it would fit in this properly. You can see with where that hole is, you can't even get there. And it goes and it goes, it goes uphill because of the radius inside. So mine is slightly more than the actual bracket that this is slipping on. I'll insert some pictures here so you can see it. But now, to me, when I have to put that through snugly, and that'll, be, of course, get some clamp value when we torque that up. And that's it. And hopefully you can do it with one set. You won't have to buy extras like I did. I was very lucky that the, when I got the extra two, uh, that I got it on my first try. So this is gonna go in the heap for something else in the future. Hey, thanks a lot for coming along. Uh, it was fun showing you this. This was very challenging, especially when you get it wrong once. Uh, if you get something wrong, just stop where you're at, reorder up what you need and start over. Don't try to make it work. Uh, that's my advice. And um, if you like this, please like it. If you haven't subscribed and you want to see further what's going to get done on this, subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.